Good morning, it's Sunday morning. This is take two actually. We did we did start filming in the little house, but our, like our, our neighbours like oh, we got our, we got fab neighbours here, but they're busy in their garden and they're doing they were doing some sawing and it meant you couldn't hear us. So we were kinda like take take two, we've come out to the kind of like the, the table out here. Um, three books again today, it being Sunday morning, we've got picture books, we've got Oi Cat which is, we had Oi Dog yesterday, so for those that enjoyed originally Oi Frog and then Oi Dog yesterday, uh, Oi Cat is the follow-up to Oi Dog, so we're, we're, do, we're doing them in order, I think. Uh, Kez, Kez Gray and Jim Field. Then we got a lovely book by um, the lady, what well, was the Poet Laureate when she when she wrote this, you don't, don't think she is the current Poet Laureate, uh, a lady called Caroline Duffy. Beautiful book called The Tear Thief. Again, beautiful pictures on that one. And then we've got a kind of a crazy book, first in a series of books uh, called What the Ladybird Heard. Where there's what the and what, what about, the... about you just um, re read all the rest and I do the animal noises? Yes, right. Yeah. Okay, so with What the Ladybird Heard, there's been various follow ups, but this very first one, uh, it's got lots of farm animal noises in it, so yeah. Squirtle is going to be part of this one. You're going to do the farm animal noises. Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Cool. Okay. Um, shall we do them in the order of Oi Cat first? Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Hope everyone's having a good Sunday morning. Right. Here we go. Oi Cat. Oi Cat. Step away from that gnat, said the frog. But I hate gnats, said the cat. Gnats are all nasty and nibbly and they keep biting me on the bottom. Well, why do you keep sitting on them then, said asked the dog. Why don't you sit on a mat instead? Because the frogs changed the rules, sighed the cat. Remember? Oh, that's right, smiled the frog. I've changed the rules. Dogs used to sit on frogs, but now they sit on logs. And cats used to sit on mats, but now they sit on gnats. I love how it's just like evil. Evil, yes. <laughs> That's not how it's done. It's a shame you're not a pony, said the dog. If you were a pony, you could sit on some macaroni. Just my luck, sighed the cat. Macaroni won't nibble your bottom, said the dog. Will you stop talking about my bottom, said the cat. My bottom is none of your business. If you were a chick, you could sit on a brick, smiled the frog. If you were a vole, you could sit on a bowl. If you were a leech, you could sit on a peach. If you were a duck, you could sit on a truck. Well, I'm not a chick, am I, frowned the cat. Or a vole, or a leech, or a duck. You're a cat, said the dog. On a gnat, smiled the frog. And rules are rules. If you were an alpaca, you could sit on a cream cracker, said the dog. If you were a mink, you could sit on a sink. And if you were an armadillo, you could sit on a pillow, a lovely, soft, comfy pillow. If you were a lark, you could sit on a shark, said the frog. Unbelievable, said the cat. If you were a shrimp, you could sit on a chimp, said the dog. If you were a bunny, you could sit on some honey. And if you were a pheasant, you could sit on a present. If you were a troll, you could, if you were a troll, you could sit on a doll. I tend to say troll rather than troll, but yeah, you've obviously got to say troll. If you were a troll, you could sit on a doll. Whatever he sits on, it has to rhyme with cat, said the frog. Perhaps you could sit on a bat, said the dog. Instead of a mat or a gnat, you could sit on a cricket bat or a baseball bat or a softball bat. Uh, bats sit on bats, said the frog. <laughs> bats sit on bats. What if you were a kitty instead of a cat, said the dog. If you were a kitty, you could sit on something pretty, like a pretty flamingo or some sparkly bows or some lovely colourful streamers. Dingoes sit on flamingos, crows sit on bows and lemurs sit on streamers, said the frog. How about a mog, said the dog. If you were a mog, you could sit on a clog or a cog. Hogs sit on clogs, said the frog, and cogs when there's a shortage of clogs. Wait a moment, smiled the cat. If I was a mog, I could sit on a... <gasps> the frog has suddenly, suddenly come and thought, uh-oh. Step away from the frog, frowned the frog. Yes, no one can sit on a frog, nodded the dog. It has to write, it has, 
It has to be something that rhymes with frog, or mog, or clog, or cog. Hmm, said the cat. What else rhymes with mog, frog, clog, and cog? Let me think. Gog, jog, bog, pog, rog, sog, tog, uog, that doesn't work, vog, quog, or zog. Uog? Who's ever heard of the uog? Dog, said the dog. Dog rhymes with frog, mog, clog, and cog. So it does, smiled the cat. So it does, clapped the frog. Wish I hadn't said that, said the dog. Lift the flap. And there's the cat sitting a perch the dog. And the frog on his sun lounger. <laughs> the end. They're funny, those books, aren't they? Yeah. They are I haven't really read um, Oi Duck Book. Oi Duck Book Plus is the weakest of the lot. I think yeah. they're running out of things. They're, they're de- and oi puppies, they're definitely kind of like running out of things to rhyme things with. It's kind of, it's, it's not as, it's not as good as they, that's definitely the last of the good ones. I would do maybe oi kittens or something maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Right, the tear thief. Beautiful, beautiful story, and beautiful, particularly beautiful pictures. Late one evening, the tear thief crept into a town. The tear thief was invisible and carried a silvery waterproof sack on her back. Only if you happened to look into a puddle as she was passing could you see what the tear thief looked like, because a puddle was the one thing that showed her reflection. The tear thief had short spiky white hair and big grey eyes. She wore a handkerchief dress and silk slippers that made no sound as she walked. The tear thief came to a quiet road with a neat row of houses and flew into a tall tree there for a good look and a listen. It was, the, it was the hour between supper and bedtime. All the curtain windows were flushed with light and enticing smells of soup and stew and pasta and onions, the tear thief's favourite, and rhubarb crumble, were drifting up and away into the deepening dusk. The tear thief listened hard with sharp ears. Boo-hoo-hoo! A child was crying. The tear thief jumped lightly from the top of the tree onto the roof of the first house. She crept along the rooftops, silent as smoke, listening, listening, until she heard the crying again. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Ha! The crying was coming from number 17. Quick as a blink, the tear thief slid down the chimney into the attic and pressed her ear to a floorboard. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Down the stairs, sly as steam, sneaked the tear thief onto the landing and into the bathroom. A boy was sitting in the bath, crying his eyes out. His mother was kneeling by the side of the bathtub, holding a pink bottle of strawberry shampoo. The tear thief sat perched on the edge of the bath, watching excitedly and loosening the top of her sack. I don't want to be shampooed, wailed the boy in the bubbles. Stop this silly crying, said the boy's mother, or the tear thief will hear you. The boy stopped crying and stared at his mother. A single plump tear dangled from the end of his nose like a pearl. The tear thief pounced. In one quick movement, she snatched the gleaming tear from the boy's nose and popped it into her sack. Oh, gasped the boy as his last tear seemed to disappear into thin air. I told you, said his mother, that was probably the tear thief. The boy and his mother started to laugh, but by now the tear thief had flown across the hall out through the front door and had shimmied halfway up a lamppost. She sat on the top, swinging her legs and listening. Wah! Wah! Through an open upstairs window at number 25 came the sound of bad-tempered screaming and sobbing. The tear thief slipped down the lamppost and slithered up a drainpipe to get to the window. Her wide grey eyes stared in at the child's bedroom. A red-faced girl in a nightdress was jumping up and down, having a terrible tantrum and scattering tears all over the room like fistfuls of gravel. I want chocolate! I want chocolate! bawled the girl. The tear thief hopped into the room and began to steal the girl's tears. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Into the silvery sack they went. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. The more tears the tear thief collected, the more tired the girl became until she eventually sat down on the floor with her back against the wall and fell fast asleep. The tear thief slipped out through the window. A light rain began to fall, orange under the streetlights. 
The tear thief worked hard. She stole the oddly long tears of a boy who trapped his finger in a flute. She stole the tiny tears of a baby having her nappy changed. Into the sack, the tears shed by a pair of twins fighting over an orange teddy bear. Into the sack. Two pear-shaped tears from the sly cheeks of a boy who'd been caught telling a lie about a big hole in his trousers. The tears were jewels inside the darkness of the sack, clinking and chinking and winking. Tears of rage were red and glowed like rubies. Tears of envy or jealousy were as green as emeralds. Tears of self-pity were turquoise. Scared tears were white like moonstones and guilty tears were amber. Rain gurgled and chuckled in the, gar in the gutters. Here and there a puddle stared up from the pavement. The tear thief listened, peeped, crept, climbed, pinched, nicked, filched and purloined until her sack was brimming with tears. She set off down the road as the last of the rain stopped falling. A girl was standing alone under a lamp post on the corner. As the tear thief sneaked past the girl, she noticed she was quietly crying. The tear thief stopped. There was always room in the sack for a few more tears. She looked carefully at the girl's tears. They were very special. They were tears of real sadness. The tear thief could tell that just one of those tears was worth a hundred cried over spilt milk or a thousand crocodile tears. She reached out her pale hand to pluck one from the girl's cheek. Just then the girl wiped her eyes with her sleeve and looked sadly into a puddle. The tear thief's mischievous face stared up at her. Eek! squealed the girl and turned round to look behind herself. There was nobody there. The girl looked at the puddle again. Sure enough, there was the reflection of the tear thief in the water. Who are you? asked the girl. I am the tear thief. The girl knelt down by the puddle and stared hard at the tear thief's reflection. How old are you? As old as joy and sorrow. Where do you live? In every place where children cry. Were you going to steal my tears? Yes, said the face of the tear thief in the puddle. Your tears are the most precious tears of all. They are worth more than diamonds. The girl stood up again. Her face was still wet with tears, like the leaves of the trees were with, were with the rain. She gently wiped off one of her own tears with her fingertip and stared at it. She could see the reflection of the tear thief there as well. But why are my tears so precious? asked the girl. I will tell you everything, said the tear thief. If you give me your tears, just close your eyes and listen. So the girl closed her eyes and the tear thief gathered the tears from her eyelashes and cheeks as she whispered to her. Each night, in the hour between supper and bedtime, I visit a different street and I steal the tears of every child who cries. When my sack is full, I climb up to the moon and I pour my sack of tears into the moon's light. The light of the moon is made from tears of laughter or pain or anger or boredom, from every kind of tear you can think of. But the most beautiful part of the moon's light comes from tears of pure sadness, and that is what your tears are. Yes, said the girl, it's because I've lost my little dog. She opened her eyes as she said this and looked again in the puddle, but there was nobody there. She ran along the street to the next puddle and stared into it, then the next, and the next, and the next, but they were all just ordinary puddles with nothing special in them at all. The girl ran round the corner, looking down at all the puddles as she ran. Then she ran, ran round another corner, and another, searching in every puddle for one more glimpse of the tear thief, but it was no use. The tear thief was gone. Woof! The girl looked up. Woof! Woof! A little black dog with a white chest was sitting under a tree at the end of the street. The girl called out her dog's name. It's you, she said. I've found you. And so she had. Her lost dog was splashing towards her through the puddles. The girl was safely tucked up in bed and the dog was safely curled up in his basket. The rain had stopped completely now and all the puddles were shrinking. The night was calm and quiet. The girl always left her curtains open so that she could see the star she was born under if she opened her eyes. She opened them now. Outside her window, a full moon rose, huge and luminous. Oh, gasped the girl. She got out of her bed, went to the window. It was the most beautiful moon she'd ever seen in her whole young life. Light poured from it in a million different moonbeams. The girl saw the light of the moon in her garden, turning the leaves on the trees to silver. 
Beyond that, she saw the light of the moon on the rooftops of all the houses like honey. A midnight cat walked along a wall and the light of the moon made its eyes burn gold. The whole town moon bathed as it slept. The river lay on its back and gazed up at the moon, dazzled and lovesick. The girl looked up. For one brief magical moment she could see the tear thief again, pouring and pouring her sack of tears into the light of the moon. It was so bright that tears came to her eyes as she looked. Her dog snuffled in his basket, and in the house next door on the other side of the wall, the newborn baby started to cry. Okay, over to you now. You've got some. You've got some work to do now. Is it going to be easier if I hold it? If you've got to do some animal noises, Can I hold it. Your arms get like, tired. Yeah. Okay. Let me take over. Right. Okay. So when it comes to animal noises, you're going to yeah. be. Are you going to be the ladybird as well? Um. You're going to be all animals. I'll be people. I'll be people. You be animals. Okay. Okay. So this is What the Ladybird Heard by, well, Julie, by Julia Donaldson and Lydia Monks. Maybe not the ladybird. Maybe not the ladybird. Okay, I'll be the ladybird. I want to make the farms. Once upon a farm lived a fat red hen, a duck in a pond and a goose in a pen, a woolly sheep and a hairy hog, a handsome horse and a dainty dog, a cat that meowed and a cat that purred, a fine prize cow and a ladybird. Always got to try and find the ladybird. Don't you? So I'll say this bit, and you've got to do the you've got to do the noise, right? And the cow said, Moo. and the hen said, Quack. hiss. Said the goose, and Quack. said the duck. Nay. Nee. Said the horse. Oink. Said the hog. Ba. Said the sheep, and woof. Said the dog. One cat meowed while the other one purred. And the ladybird said never a word. So that's easy, the ladybird said. Yeah, he did it, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But the ladybird saw and the ladybird heard. She saw two men in a big black van with a map and a key and a cunning plan. And she heard them whisper, this is how we're going to steal the fine prize cow. There's the ladybird. Oh yeah, you can see the ladybird. There we go. Open the gate at dead of night, past the horse and then turn right, round the duck pond, past the hog. Be careful not to wake the dog. Left past the sheep, then straight ahead and in through the door of the prize cow's shed. There I think. Yeah, that's yeah. the ladybird. Good spot. That's your job. You're going to find the ladybird on the page. Well, it's there. <laughs> yeah. And the little spotty ladybird, who never before had said a word, told the animals, This is how two thieves are planning to steal the cow. They'll open the gate at dead of night, pass the horse and then turn right. Round the duck pond, pass the hog, being careful not to wake the dog. Left past the sheep, then straight ahead and in through the door of the prize cow's shed. That okay for a ladybird? Yeah. <laughs> I'm entirely sure what ladybirds sound like. Oh, you're back on. Right. Let's put it over near you. And the cow said, Moo. And the hen said, Quack. Hiss. Said the goose. And Quack. Said the duck. Nay. Said the horse. Oink. Said the hog. Ba. Said the sheep. Woof. Said the dog. And both the cats began to meow. We can't let them steal the fine prize cow. But the ladybird had a good idea, and she whispered it into it into each animal ear. Oh, there she is. Mm -hmm. At the end. I don't think she's told the hen. No, she's about to, about to tell the hen. <laughs> she's just told the cat. Just told the two cats. And that's the next job. At dead of night, the two bad men, Hefty Hugh and Lanky Len, opened the gate while the farmer slept and tiptoe into the farm they crept. Then the goose said, Nay! With all her might, and Len said, That's the horse, turn right! Yeah. 
and the dainty dog began to... Quack! The duck, said Hugh. We're right on track. Oink! Said the cat. There goes the og. Be careful not to wake the dog. You on again? Ba ba ba! Said the fat red hen. The sheep were nearly there, said Len. Then the duck on the pond said, Moo, moo, moo! Two more steps to go, said Hugh. And they both stepped into the duck pond. Splosh! And the farmer woke and said, golly gosh. And he called the cops and they came, Nina. And they threw the thieves into their panda car. Oh, there's the... Oh, good spot, good spot. And there's one up there. Oh, let's get it in focus. There's the farmer looking angry. <laughs> All right, you on again? Let's hold it up like that. <sighs> then the cow said... Moo! And the hen said... Cluck said the goose, and quack, said the duck, nay, said the horse, oink, said the hog, bah, said the sheep, woof, said the dog, and the farmer cheered and both cats purred, but the ladybird said never a word. There's the ladybird, it's a bit easy. He's easy to spot on that one, on his leaf. And then we've got a picture of the, okay. the whole right farmyard. Can you see the ladybird there? Is the ladybird there? I thought that was, but that's no, not. that's a bowl, isn't it? He must be on there somewhere because the ladybird is on every page. Oh gosh, well, it is pretty tiny, all of these. But, but perhaps he's not on that page. Because that's not an official page. This is kind that of like could be it, that, like the tiniest thing ever. Yeah, it might be, and let's face it, he's going to be tiny there. Well, if uh, we'll scan it along, if anybody else can sort of like see it when they look back at it. Okay, no, nope, I can't spot it. There we go, nice books today. So that was The Tear Thief, Oi Cat, and What the Ladybird Heard. So we'll have a couple of, we'll have a couple of the other ladybird turds yeah, on like in, in future, may, in future so weeks. So maybe holiday, seaside, I don't know, whatever. We could have a, we could have a... I like the holiday one. Yeah, we could have a whole, all three of them, one, one week or something like that, if, yeah. we wanted, if that wasn't too much. Wait. I'd, I think there's only two left. I had no idea. Is that? Uh, I definitely know the seaside and je holiday. Right, okay. I don't know, anyway. Okay. Right, okay, let us say TTFN for now. I'll wave goodbye from here. <laughs> uh, we'll say TTFN. We are back tomorrow for chapter six of The Adventures of the Wishing Chair. Um, I think it's a little bit colder tomorrow, so I think we'll definitely be in the little house tomorrow. Yeah. Is that with you? No, that's with that's, that's with Emily with on Emily. Tuesday. Emily's head's okay now. She didn't do the reading on Friday because she bashed her head. Yeah. But her head is... It opened up a tiny bit. It did open up a tiny little bit, but she's fine now, isn't she? Yeah. Cool. Right, TTFN. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye.